I'll be moving on to the next type of framework, which is um, a BDD framework, which is also known as Cucumber. OK, um, now I'll be using Cucumber in our uh, in the real time framework or project which will be working next week. Right. The simple reason is um, right now it is the most popular framework. Even though TestNG has got its own capabilities, Cucumber is preferred over uh, TestNG or JUnit in almost all the companies right now, simply because of its uh, capabilities. Right. So um, I, I, I personally feel it's beneficial for you guys to learn um, a framework which is built on top of Cucumber. Obviously, you can um, mix Cucumber with TestNG or Cucum I mean the general format is Cucumber with JUnit, but you can also mix Cucumber with TestNG. So if we get time, we, I will also show you that how you can run Cucumber with TestNG, but um, there is not much benefit of that because uh, most of the functionalities are kind of present in Cucumber as well. Uh, and only some functionality which is not present in Cucumber, which is present in TestNG. So I uh, will be building our real time framework in Cucumber. So I'll just go through some basics um, today and then in the next session we'll be um, writing. I mean creating right from scratch. OK. So starting with um, BDD, right? So if you have heard about these terminologies like BDD and uh, TDD, so TDD stands for test driven um, development and BDD stands for behavior driven development. OK. Now um, it is also one of the agile software development process. OK, so BDD is used in most of the agile practices uh, or agile development projects. OK. Um, and why it is used because it is it encourages team collaboration, so everybody in the team can contribute when you are working on a BDD framework or a BDD process. OK. Um, some of the principles of BDD are inherited from the test driven development, so if you talk about test driven development, right? So in that um, developers first write the tests, OK, and then they write the code. So once they run those tests, OK, and they find that something is missing or they break those tests which they have written, OK? So once that is broken, again, they fix those tests and again, they write some code, OK? So this way they, they build their code and for every code they have written there is a certain number of tests right so this way they make sure that their code is um, covered from all the different functionalities or all the tests are written for a particular piece of code okay so that that is the way they build their code and that is different from um, the usual way of development where you write all the development code and then you write your unit tests, right? So that's a different way of development, but this is the test driven development. OK, and in behavior driven development, um, the domain, the DSL, the domain specific language, right, which is behind this BDD frameworks it is similar to english okay uh, it is something called the gherkin syntax which provides a lot of um, different features which are pretty similar to english and that is one of the advantage of using bdd okay some of the popular bdd tools are cucumber um, there is jbehave uh, for dotnet there is specflow uh, for JavaScript, that is Jasmine, and there are lots and lots of different BDD frameworks or tools which are coming up and which are very popular. These are some of the very popular frameworks which are being used in the industry right now for uh, different technologies, obviously. OK, now I uh, will be uh, looking at Cucumber and not the other other frameworks in this particular training session. So what is Cucumber? It is a popular BDD framework. OK, it uses Gherkin language to write your business specifications. So Gherkin language is pretty similar to English like language. OK, so it is very simple to understand and also easy to write. Um, now it contains 
uh, features, um, feature files, step definitions, and a test runner. So these are the three basic components of Cucumber. Okay, the feature files, step definitions, and the test runner. It supports multiple languages, Java, JavaScript, and there are many other. Okay. It can be easily integrated with automation tools like Selenium, and there are many other tools which you can integrate Cucumber with. Uh, you can also integrate with popular test frameworks like TestNG or JUnit. Okay. Um, and then the most important part of Cucumber, it has got um, very good inbuilt reporting capabilities, which is not even present in uh, TestNG. For TestNG, you need to write um, different, I mean, you need to write, include different listeners in order to build these different extensive reports in HTML, but in Cucumber, you find it by default, okay? And they provide a lot of other capabilities in terms of reporting. And also uh, different formats of reports, like you can generate a JSON report, you can generate um, HTML report uh, or other types of reports in Cucumber. Okay, so as I as I was talking about components, right? So these are the three main components: feature files. So it it has the high level description of scenarios and your steps which is written in the Gherkin language, okay, which is similar to English like language. Then uh, there are step definition files. Now these are Java methods, okay, uh, they have got an expression which link which link these files to one or more Gherkin steps. Okay, so whatever steps you have written in your feature files, these are basically the implementation. Uh, this is where the implementation is written. OK, so if you have written some steps in Gherkin, uh, it is automatically linked to the step definition files where you will write the implementation and where your execution will happen. OK, so you can say the internal logic is written in step definition files and the high level definition is present in the feature files. OK, and Kukumba provides um, the link between these two. Then there is the Cucumber runner file, which is uh, where your execution begins. OK, so it is the starting point uh, to start the execution of your tests. It could be a JUnit runner file or it also could be a test engine runner file. OK, it, it controls the flow of your execution. Also, you can filter out uh, your tests or you can uh, run a certain number of tests. So there are different configurations which you can provide in your runner file. So these are the three main components of any Cucumber framework. OK, and there are there are other things, but these three uh, form the backbone of any particular Cucumber BDD framework. Tests in the form of Gherkin language, right, which is similar to English language, which means you can include your business analysts and developers, right, apart from the QA team members into your writing your tests, feature files, or even the step definition files. So that way, uh, even business analyst can understand what tests or what test specifications are being linked to which test cases, right? By looking at the feature files, and then developers can look at the step definition files to get an idea of what is being implemented, or even they can help you write those step definition files, right? So that is how um, everybody. Um, can understand what is going on within the test cases and everybody can also contribute into your framework. OK, so that is the reason Cucumber is emerging as one of the most popular automation frameworks, which is used with Selenium and other automation tools. OK, so since we were talking about the Gherkin language, right? So Gherkin uses a set of special keywords to give structure and meaning to executable specifications. OK. Um, so some of the keywords are present here. OK, so there is the feature keyword. Which is the high level? I mean, it provides a high level description of a software feature. OK, and to group related scenarios. So this you can call it uh, this feature. You can call it your. Um, test case name. OK, so test case name could be similar to your feature. Uh, feature which you define inside this uh, 
Gherkin language or your BDD framework. OK. And then um, all of these will be contained inside the feature file. OK, so that it's not inside the step definition files. It will be contained inside the feature files. Um, then there is steps. OK, uh, steps you need to divide it in given when then and there is then and OK. All of these keywords can be used to define your steps. OK, so given. It is used to describe the scene of the scenario or something which has happened in the past. We'll look at an example and try to understand this, but um, these are given when right so it is used to describe an event or an action and then then it is used to describe an expected outcome or result okay so then you will include the result when you will specify an action which you are performing and given you can uh, consider it as a condition uh, a precondition before you execute a particular scenario okay so this is how you construct your steps um, then there is also scenario. OK, so scenario would be kind of your uh, test case scenario name. OK, so feature would be your test case name. Scenario would be your test case scenario name. OK, so I forgot to include it, but I will do it. OK, so um, the other keywords I will explain you later, but let's first try to uh, understand how we create a Cucumber framework. OK, and how we write this um, Gherkin language inside our Cucumber framework. So what does it contain? So let me create a new project here. And I will call it Cucumber. OK, so um, we need to have the Maven dependencies for Cucumber. We need to add them. So, now do remember that there are um, different companies which have built these plugins okay, or dependencies. So there is uh, one from info.kyox and there is one from io.cucumber. Okay. But um, I think the io.cucumber is better because they are, they have been making changes um, in their last releases, which are pretty recent. Uh, Info.kyox is a little bit outdated. OK, so try to use the io.cucumber dependency when you are working with Cucumber. So this is the Cucumber Java dependency. We can also use the J unit Cucumber JVM. OK, and then. There are some other uh, as well. If you're using test ng, you can add this test ng dependency. If you're using Spring or um, Pico container Java 8, there's a sp specific to Java 8 dependency that can also be added. But for um, generic purpose, uh, these two are enough for developing a Cucumber framework. OK. OK, so once that is done, OK, so. There is a specific uh, hierarchy which you need to follow if you are developing a Cucumber framework, OK? So there is uh, inside source test, right? You need to create a directory called resources. And inside this resources, you 
you have to create another directory called features. OK, so this is the directory where all your feature files should be present. OK, so this is the um, generic standard of using a Cucumber framework. So inside this, if I want to create a Cucumber file, OK. So feature file. So all the feature files will be contained inside the features folder. So say for example, I create this login dot feature. OK. Uh, now if you have installed the plugins Cucumber, you will see there is a Cucumber sign over the login dot feature file. OK, so similar signs you will get whenever you use the dot feature extension for your feature files. OK, and it will also highlight the syntax. Now these feature files will contain all the different um, keywords which we discussed earlier. Like the first keyword would be the feature. OK, so this is similar to your test case name. And here I will call it. Login user. OK, something similar to this. So this should define what kind of um, test specification or test scenario you're working with. So this feature file should contain all the scenarios specific to the user login. OK, so let's call it user login. Now after this, you have to define a scenario. OK, now a feature one feature file could have different scenarios. OK, you can create any number of scenarios inside a feature file. So there is a limit, but still you can create a good number of scenarios for your feature file. So generally what you should do um, based on industry standards is you should try to create a feature file for each particular kind of test cases. OK, each test case should be a feature file and then there could be a number of uh, different scenarios linked to your test cases, right? So those scenarios you should define inside here. And don't make your scenarios too complex, right? So keep it simple and short so that it is easier to debug uh, when you are running your test cases. So don't make too lengthy scenarios when you are writing your feature files, OK? So how you can define your scenarios here is you need to give a scenario name here. So I will say user is able to. Log in with valid credentials. OK, so this is one scenario for me. For my test case, OK, uh, logging with valid credentials. Uh, after this, I need to include steps for this scenario. OK, so what are the steps in order to complete this scenario? And for that I need to. Divide my steps into given when and then OK, so. As soon as you write this keyword set, you will see these are highlighted. These are all part of the plugin functionalities. OK. So you need to write given, which is kind of a precondition. OK, so you can say given user enters. Um, valid username. In the username field. OK. And then you can write and user enters. Valid password in the password field. OK. And then you can write when, which means you want to perform a action now. OK, so when user. On the login button. OK. And then you have to write then, which means the result of your particular scenario. OK, what will happen if user clicks on the login button? So here you have to write that user is. Logged in successfully. OK, so this is how you write a particular scenario. You have to give the scenario name and then divide the steps um, based on given and when then. OK, you can use and anywhere. 
um, given and or when and right. But generally this is the uh, flow how you want to write it. OK, so you need to think of your scenario and then divide it uh, based on these steps. Now. Unless these are not implemented, right? You have not created a step definition. It will show you that this is undefined. OK, so. And this will be highlighted in yellow color, which means there is no step definition for this steps. OK, and similarly. I can have another scenario where I will say user is. Not able to log in. With. Incorrect or invalid credentials, so this is my. This is my negative scenario, OK. And then I can have similar steps here. I can say invalid. Invalid. And user is not logged in. User is or yeah, user is not logged in. To the application. OK, so. These are two different scenarios. Similarly, you can have any number of scenarios, OK? Uh, and you can also reuse the steps which you have written. OK, so as you can see, this is one step which I we ha which I have reused in the other scenario as well. So it's not necessary that you repeat the steps again and again. You can uh, reuse a step which can be used in any number of scenarios. OK, so the implementation could be just once, but you can um, reuse the same step for different number of scenarios and in different feature files as well. There is no restriction on uh, reusability of uh, your step definitions or steps in different feature files. You can uh, reuse it as many times or across your features or across your scenarios. So that's one of the um, you can say functionality of or advantage of using Cucumber framework is uh, it makes it more reusable your scripts. Now, so this is uh, this is where your resources and feature files uh, will be present. That similarly you have to have a step definition files also. OK, so I can call it. I can have a package inside this. I will have a test runner file, right? And then I can have another package for my step definitions. OK, so this package will contain all my step definitions and this will contain my test runner. OK, so this is my J unit test runner from where my execution will begin. OK, now how do you create your step definitions? Um, either you can do it manually, OK, or else um, you can also take help of the ID. OK, so when you press control, sorry, Alt enter, right? It will give you two options create the step definition or create all step definitions. OK. So once you do this, right, uh, it will give you a file name. OK, and it will give you this file location. Obviously you can um, change it based on your requirement. But if you do this, it will create all the step definitions in this particular step definition file. Right. Now um, sometimes it creates it in the Lambda expressions format, which is which may be difficult to understand if you don't uh, are not familiar with Lambda expressions in Java. But um, if you don't want in Lambda expressions, if you want in simple Java language, right? So that you can do uh, press again control alt enter. Sorry, all only alt enter and then create all step definitions uh, change the file type from java 8 to java okay to a lower versions of java 
you can also select the folder path here. OK, so I can create it under step definitions. And I can also change this to login step devs. I can change the file name. OK, so now you can see it is more kind of understandable. OK, uh, not not Lambda expressions, but simple methods which are created inside step definitions for each step. OK, so you have to define the annotation, which annotation which is present in your step. Then you can define that exact step which you have written in your feature file. OK, so this this particular step you can just define it here and this way it can basically link this test method to your feature file or the given step okay similarly you have to write it for all the steps and uh, this uh, these are java methods inside which you have to write the implementation okay so this is how a step definition file looks like now for every feature file you can create a step definition file or you can write everything inside one single step definition file but it is um, best practice is to kind of divide your step definitions into different step definition files based on uh, your functionality or scenarios right so that um, it becomes easier to manage the step definitions also it becomes easier to uh, find them when you require that so um, the so these are the two components of Cucumber. One is uh, the feature file and the other is step definition. The other important part is the test runner, right? So where your execution will begin or where you can control your execution flow. OK, so this is a Java file. And um, by default it is it uses JUnit. As I said, you can also use uh, TestNG, but for that you need to um, implement a different interface, okay, which is defined by um, by the Cucumber classes. Now, if you want to run it with um, JUnit, you need to define a notation called the run with, right? Inside this, you need to define Cucumber dot class, right? So. That means we are running a Cucumber class with our JUnit runner. OK. Now, apart from this, you can also define some Cucumber options. OK, so this will basically provide you uh, with. You can actually link your feature files and step definitions with your test runner. OK. Um, but if your step definitions is present inside the same package, you don't need to link it. OK, it will be automatically linked. Uh, but feature files, since it is in a different folder, we need to define the path of the feature files here. OK, we have to give it here. So you can say features and you can give the path here. OK. Source test resources features. OK, now Either you can give the whole path. It will run all the feature files inside this folder or you can just mention one feature file. OK, and you can have um, similar path defined here one by one so that it will uh, run all the features one by one. But if you want to run just one, you can do it that that way as well. OK, so this is the features option where you kind of link your features with the path and then you can also have some plugins okay which is used for reporting um there is something called pretty right so this basically um makes the reports readable in the readable format okay then you can define what time type, types of report you require okay so if you require html you can say target um, I mean, you can define the path of the HTML file, right? So I'll say. OK, so this is the HTML file which will be created. Now, if you want a JSON file, you can also do that. OK, 
Okay. Similarly, you can have uh, any number of plugins inside this plugin section. Okay. And there are something called tags um, also. We'll learn it when we talk about tags. Okay. But this is the basic um, structure of a test runner file inside a Cucumber framework. Okay, now um, if I run it, it, it will still run, but we don't have any implementation for all of these. All of these features or scenarios, right? You can see it is printing all the steps here in the in the report. Um, so this is the, just, just the logs where it is telling you what has passed and what has failed. But if you want to view a more detailed report, right? You can click on this, right? So this is a new feature of Cucumber where they are publishing the reports on. Um, on, on their cloud platform. OK, so you can um, access your reports uh, for a temporary time period, right? Like 24 hours, it will be there in their cloud. You can also create a GitHub repository and uh, put your reports there so that you can share it with your team members. I will uh, tell you how you can do that as well. OK. But uh, for publishing this reports, you have to um, include these properties in your in your project, okay? Or you can also use this um, annotation for JUnit, which is Cucumber Options Publish equals to true. Okay, so once once you do that, um, it will basically publish your report into the Cucumber Cloud Platform, where you can view it. OK, and um, as you can see, we have defined our HTML uh, report and JSON report in the target folder. So it has created a HTML report and a cucumber.json report, right? Now you can also open this with any browser, this HTML report, right? Or you can use the JSON report to basically pass through your uh, results and build more extensive reports. OK, so there are multiple uh, reporting options in Cucumber, which you will find. OK, just let me open this, although you won't see anything. Um, in this particular report because we haven't written any implementation, but it will show you the basic information, right? So the feature file, the scenarios, uh, what steps have passed. Um, and other other um, information about your test, right? So if you have tags, you can also filter out with tags or you can search for tags. OK, that will give you all the information regarding your test, like duration, um, platform, your Java, Java version, OS, which OS and which CPU, right? So um, this kind of report, you can share it with your team members as well. Uh, using the new feature of Cucumber, which where you can publish it to a cloud platform, which I will show you later. So, um, so this is a basic uh, kind of structure for your Cucumber framework if you're developing, right? So you can write all your scenarios inside your uh, feature file, and then you can write all the step definitions, and then you can execute it from the test runner. Cucumber is it's open source framework, right? So this is an additional functionality which they have released recently. So it they allow you to publish uh, re your reports, right? Which on their cloud platform for a limited period of time, and then you can share that link with your team members as well. They can directly access it from anywhere. So that removes the dependency of uh, you sharing your HTML report um, separately with your team members. You can directly share the link which um, is kind of um, present with your Cucumber reports, which which is uh, provided by Cucumber itself. And uh, there is no no paid version for that, so it's very simple actually. If I put this right. Either I can put it in the cucumber.properties. I can create a file or I can put this publish equals to true here. 
So after this, Okay, so as you can see, uh, a customized link is um, presented for you. I mean, they create a customized link for your particular report and it is present in their cloud platform. Uh, this report will self destruct in 24 hours, so they only provide it for 24 hours, this particular link. But if you want to keep the reports forever, you can also do it. Okay, so you just need to create a profile. Uh, basically a github repository where uh, this report will be stored okay so if you click on this link it will take you to your url okay and it will load this report it's it's a nice report uh, it will tell you how much execution is present which platform you have run what was the duration okay um and then also all the details of your tests OK, so feature scenarios with steps have passed failed. You can also delete your report um, if you want. If you want to keep your future reports forever, just follow this link. It will log in into GitHub and uh, it will create a separate report collection where you can store your reports. So this is one of the recent features of Cucumber, which was not present, I think, it is this year, beginning of this year, or maybe last year, sometime they have published, released this. 